Hello, my name is Megan Bones and for my A2 Media coursework I was given the task to create an extract for a documentary, a newspaper advert and a double page spread to promote the documentary. I had to carefully consider the media technologies in the construction, planning and evaluation stages. Research is the process of looking into media text to establish real life media conventions. Research was the most vital and important part of the planning stages as it helped me to become more creative, which was shown through my ideas. It ensured that I knew what key conventions needed to go into the media products that I was creating, but also gave me the inspiration to look into unrelated texts as it served as another platform for inspiration. This included the author theory. This theory is a piece of media or a subject that reflects someone's personal life. Although researching this theory, it did not prove essential to my documentary. However, it gave me more inspiration and ideas. The more I researched into different theories, theorists, etc., the more ideas came along that helped me come to my final idea for the end product. If I didn't do any research, that I would have a very niche idea of what my final product would be. But seeing as I did do a lot of research, it gave me a lot of inspiration. During my A2 research, I looked into relative concepts such as genre theory, analysis of documentaries, voiceovers and the history of documentaries and intertextuality. All of these concepts prov provided me with the knowledge that I needed to create a documentary to the best of my ability. Looking at other documentaries also gave me other forms of inspiration that I was able to use in my own documentary. For example, Paul O'Grady's documentary, For the Love of Dogs, gave me the inspiration to create a documentary about dogs. More research into documentaries included a questionnaire and a focus group. Carrying out a questionnaire was a vital part of research as I needed to know who my target audience and who my documentary would be aimed at. I asked several vague questions, for example, would you prefer to hear a voiceover in a documentary? And I found that 97% of people who answered my questionnaire said that said that they would like to hear a voiceover. I also find out what my age group would mostly watch my documentary, which was important. Then I knew what I could and could not include in my documentary. Distributing my documentary questionnaire randomly allowed me to produce unbiased answers. My focus group included five people so I could gather more detailed information that only a focus group could answer. For example, I asked what media platform they would prefer to watch a documentary on. Therefore, I would, I would know where to distribute my documentary. For example, on YouTube, Netflix and DVD, etc. Research for both of my ancillary tasks was rather simple. I just researched into both ta tasks. For example, I looked at five double page spreads and five newspaper adverts and then I analysed them. I also went onto SlideShare and looked at the conventions of both of the tasks and ensured that I would include these in both of my ancillary tasks. Whilst re researching newspaper adverts, I found that one gave me a lot of inspiration on how to do my newspaper advert. Therefore, I took aspects of the Channel 4 newspaper advert and created my own. Planning was also a very important element that I needed to do before completing my main product and ancillary tasks. The planning that I did for both of my documentary included a storyboard, shot list, pitch and planning and writing a script. A storyboard is a, sequ oh, a, storyboard is a sequence of drawings with some directions and dialogue representing the shot's plan for a media production. I planned beforehand a rough idea of what structure my documentary would have, therefore enabling me to draw out all of the shots that I would then use when filming my documentary. The storyboard is also tied in with the shot list. A shot list is a full log of all the shots, location and props that you would want to include in your film. Essentially, it gave me a checklist filled with minute details that gave me gave my documentary a sense of direction and efficiency. I matched the numbers on the shot list with the numbers that I had given each box on my storyboard, ensuring that I was more organised when it came to filming for my documentary. The pitch had to include every aspect that would be included in my documentary, from titles to characters. I presented this to my 
class that included 20 peers and this meant I gained some vital feedback which meant I had to make some changes but not very dramatic ones. Throughout the whole of the planning process I always had to consider the target audience as this who was my documentary was aimed at. If I did not carefully consider the aspects, get feedback and always consider the target audience, then I would not get a very potential audience watching my documentary, making it very unsuccessful. Finally, I had to plan the script and I would say this was the most difficult part of planning. I watched other dog related documentaries and took some inspiration from that. I had to create a voiceover script and a film script. I also matched both scripts to the storyboards so I knew when the characters' voices had to come in at the right times. As part of planning the script, I had to consider who would be the perfect voiceover for my documentary. This meant I had to make auditions and ask people to read out a short monologue. I auditioned eight people, four girls and four boys, so I, can, so I had a wide variety of potential people to choose from. I asked my peers to give me some feedback also on who they would prefer to hear as a voiceover for my documentary and came to the final decision. This also made sure that I was organised when f coming to film my documentary. Moreover, I also filmed some test footage that, so I could make sure that my camera operated properly and there was nothing wrong with it or the footage that was produced. For my A2 coursework task, I was given the challenge to create an extract for a documentary. I previously mentioned all of the research and planning that went into it, but now I'm going to dis discuss how it how I filmed it. Originally I wanted to film at a well-known dogs charity, Dogs Trust, and I emailed them several times, however they could not accommodate my filming. So I tried Battersea Dogs Home, but I received the same problem. I wanted to film at a dogs charity because I could inform the target audience members of, how challenge, of the challenges that these charities are facing and how important it is to adopt dogs as well as buying them. Keeping that, idea, oh, keeping that idea in mind, I researched and planned into a similar area that came up with my original idea. With some inspiration from other documentaries about dogs and animals, I had to film in several different locations for my montage of dogs at the beginning of my documentary. I also asked all of my family and friends who had dogs if they could go to the local park or garden with them so I could film their dogs for a short amount of time. I managed to do this within a week, however, I had to take some time out of school so I was able to meet everyone that allowed me to film their dog. I wanted all of the shots to be outside so it added to the continuity of the montage. I previously filmed dogs inside of their owner's home, however, the surroundings looked different in every shot, therefore it didn't look very consistent or professional. For both of my ancillary tasks, I wanted them to co coincide with my documentary so all three products would promote each other. This was a very important aspect that I had to plan and consider because this is what real media products also do and I wanted mine to look as professional as possible. I took inspiration from a Channel 4 newspaper advert that was promoting a documentary. It had all of the key aspects from the main image to a logo for the channel that it was being advertised on. So I wanted to, I wanted to include all of these so audiences would immediately recognise that it was a newspaper advert. For my double page spread, I also researched a variety of different real products, from one about Justin Bieber to one about Lady Gaga, as I found it was very difficult to find magazines about dogs as they do not seem to have a very large target audience. I found it difficult to plan and create both of my ancillary tasks as previously in my AS coursework I only worked on Final Cut Express because I didn't make any for that piece of coursework. To overcome this I watched YouTube tutorials to help me when using certain tools like cutting out an image of my dog. It helped a lot and I also asked my peers for help when I couldn't find the results on YouTube or Google. However, I did find this software very useful and I would be able to use it again in the foreseeable future.